So we're going to move on to the apps part of our demo. And uh, the apps demos are, of course, where we're going to find uh, all the um, insights into the new tools that, that um, can work in our mobile universe. Uh, to start, we have uh, the illustrious uh, David Eddy, who is a pioneer of data-driven medicine. Yes, please give it up for David Eddy. Um, Dr. Eddy is uh, one, of, one of my heroes. He, he doesn't know that, but um, I've, I've been a huge fan of his work in uh, pushing data forward and advancing um, the causes of evidence and the, the uh, essential nature of data uh, in medicine. And so I can't wait to hear what uh, he's got for us in Indigo. Dr. Eddy, it's Great. all yours. Well, thank you very much for that very generous uh, introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk about a concept called individualized guidelines and an application that implements that concept called Indigo. Now, I only have 10 minutes, so I can only hit the highlights, but I think we can, uh, it is possible to give you a pretty good idea of what it does. First, let's begin with a problem that we're trying to address. We know that the cost and quality of healthcare are largely determined by physician and patient decisions, which in turn are largely determined by guidelines. Unfortunately, current guidelines, as they're currently designed by national organizations and so forth, are rather clunky. Perhaps choose a better term for that, but some of the issues are that they've been designed for groups of people or populations rather than individuals. They're designed one risk factor at a time. So for example, there is a blood pressure guideline and there is a cholesterol guideline and there's a different glucose guideline. They tend to use sharp cut points. For example, the blood pressure guideline says treat if your systolic blood pressure is over 140. They don't carry any information about the effects on health outcomes. They're designed to reach targets, treatment targets, and uh, address processes, but they don't tell you about health outcomes, which means that physicians and patients don't have the information they need to make informed decisions. And there's an implicit assumption that all the interventions are equally important because there's no quantitative understanding of their effects on guidelines. So today's guidelines are too simplistic, and a way of illustrating that is to consider two patients. Mrs. Smith and Mr. Jones. Um, here are their biological or uh, demographic information, uh, age, height, weight, and so forth and so on, as you can see. The question we're gonna ask is who should be treated for hypertension? Now the hypertension guideline says treat if your blood pressure is over 140, don't treat if you're under 140. And you can see that Mrs. Smith's blood pressure is a little bit over 140, Mr. Jones is a little bit under 140. But in fact, if you actually look at the risk of an MI or a stroke in the next five years, Mr. Jones has five times the risk as Mrs. Smith. And he would get five times the benefit that Mrs. Smith would get from treatment of hypertension. Why is that? Whoops. That's because there are a number of other risk factors that are not taken into account by the guideline. One is weight and BMI. Another one is that Mr. Jones has a higher LDL. He has a lower LDL with a good cholesterol and he's got uh, prediabetes. Those risk factors cause him to have a higher risk and will cause him to derive greater benefit than Mrs. Smith in the guideline. So what we'd like to be able to do is individualize the guideline to each particular patient by taking into account all the important information, all the information that every physician instinctively and intuitively wants to take into account. We'd like the guideline to span multiple conditions, all the risk factors all at one time and considers all of the treatments uh, uh, both one by one and in various combinations. That is, we'd like to create a single integrated guideline. Now the Indigo application that we've developed takes into account about 30 patient variables and it's virtually the same list that every physician would identify as being important in a decision like this. We also have Indigo identifying all the potentially beneficial treatments, that is all the treatments from which this particular patient, given their variable information, um, would, might potentially benefit. Indigo then calculates and displays the patient's current risks and the effects of each one of the potential treatments, both one by one and in any possible combination. And I'll say that this is all made possible by electronic health records. We receive the information from the electronic health record and we present the information back to the physician and the patient through the electronic health record. Now Indigo, this application is based on the Archimedes model and I've been asked to tell you a little bit about that. It spans multiple diseases, so it's not as though we have one model of diabetes and another model of colon cancer, but they're all together in the same model because that's important for re representing comorbidities and things like that. Uh, realistically. It is physiologically and clinically realistic to the extent permitted by the data. So we try to represent um, pathways. We uh, treat biological variables as though they're continuous, time is continuous, and so forth. 
We also include care processes, behaviors, utilization costs, and all the other things that administrative decision makers, as well as physicians, uh, find to be important. The model is built from and validated against publicly available data, and this is another pitch for data. We rely very heavily on data sets like NHANES, National Hospital Discharge Survey, and so forth. Uh, we use clinical trials extensively and uh, the data that are available through the NIH data sets and so forth, epidemiological studies, and things like that. Finally, our committees can be customized to different populations, and that's important because care differs in various settings. Now, here are some of the uses of indigo. I'm listing four. One is individual patient physician decision making, sort of decision making at the bedside, if you will, or in the clinic. Other applications are to prioritize outreach programs, to develop a personal health score that will help patients understand their risk and how they can improve that risk, and to develop population level health scores. Today, I'm going to talk about the first of these applications. Let's now switch to the application. It's a little bit difficult to see. Um, let me orient you to this chart. First of all, this is a chart that applies to a particular patient. There are a number of charts in the Indigo application. Some apply to populations, um, some provide other tools, but I'm just going to focus on the main one that physicians and patients use together. So the idea is that when a physician sees a patient, I'm sorry, when a patient sees a physician, the uh, patient and physician will look together at the computer screen. Perhaps the patient will slide their chair around, or uh, the uh, physician will swing the computer around, but they'll look at this chart together. Over here on the left, we have the basic demographic information that every electronic health record uh, has. But we also have a lot of important quantitative information that is not available in a standard electronic health record. So I'm finding it a little bit difficult to see. Well, let's, uh, let me tell you about these various um, uh, bars. On the vertical axis is the risk of a heart attack or stroke in the coming five years. Um, this bar is the patient's current risk. Sorry, this bar is the patient's current risk, uh, given the current treatments they have and their biomarkers and so forth. This represents the risk of an otherwise healthy patient, person in the top 10 percentile. This bar represents the risk that the patient would have if they stopped taking medications that they're currently on. So that's a powerful motivator for them to continue to take treatments. These bars represent potential treatments that this patient might benefit from. And this bar, the blue bar, right, represents the risk that would occur if the patient took various treatments. So the physician and patient can click on these bars and decide which treatments that the patient wants to consider in various combinations and so forth, and it changes the patient's uh, current risk. So the physician and patient can see this information, and it turns out to be a very powerful motivator for the patient. This has been evaluated uh, independently by the Care Management Institute at uh, Kaiser Permanente. There was very high physician acceptance. Uh, their quote was, all doctors agreed it helped them make the best decisions. Patients also really loved it. There were lots and lots of comments like this. It was really impressive, the tools and the outcomes and how it could show what it was going, what's going on in my life. It made an impact. For me, it was more like the doctor wants us to be a participant and so forth. What seems to make the difference is the quantitative information that is moving from just saying, you should lose weight, to saying, if you do lose weight, this is what will happen to you and these, this is how your risk will go down. The evaluation showed that this information greatly increased patient adherence. There was a six-fold increase in use of statin prescriptions, for example, in patients who were candidates for statins when they were shown the numbers. That led to a 13% reduction in five-year CVD risk compared to an electronic health record and the decision support tools that were already in the HR, EHR. So it's not indigo versus nothing, it's indigo on top of an EHR. And that changed health outcomes. Uh, for every million members, there were about 1,400 heart attacks and strokes averted annually. It also reduced hospitalization, and that led to a savings in cost on the order of $100 million. Adoption has been very good. It's been picked up by three regions in Southern Cal I'm sorry, in, uh, Kaiser Permanente. Two Beacon communities are using it, an ACO pioneer is using it. There are seven others where it's already being implemented, and there are more than 15 others who are in, uh, in discussion about adopting it. Well, that was the individual patient-physician decision-making application of Indigo. 
This afternoon at the ACO breakout session, I'll be talking about these other applications, that is, how you can use this tool to prioritize outreach programs, develop a personal health score, and develop a population level health score. Thank you very much. So that's, that's huge. It's, it's, um, it's amazing how uh, powerful personalized information is to patient change. It's, uh, you know, when you give people information about themselves that informs where they're going to go with their health, it really enhances enhancement. It's, a, it's this enhances enhancement. It's this, it's this powerful catalyst. It's, it's exactly what we're talking about and exactly what we're here for. So, so thank you to Dr. Eddy. And um, if you want to read more about Archimedes, uh, there was a great article in Wired Magazine a couple of years ago. Um, so it's, it's really, it's worth reading.